I love Candace Owens. I've been watching Candace Owens um, talk, and she's right about a ton of stuff. But where she loses me is with this Disneyland conservative shit. And <clears throat> I'm going to show you what I mean, but I think this picture kind of ap- accurately represents the way that a lot of conservatives see the world. It, like, like it's this happy, like, oh, if we just bring God back, everything will be fine. Oh, yes, God is the answer to everything. No, it's not. In fact, God is the reason we're in the predicament we are now because religion promotes subservience. And I mean, if you're gay, the only reason you have to feel guilty about that or, you know, feel like be be ostracized from society is some religious nuts view that being gay is somehow wrong in the Bible, which is not. It doesn't say anything about it in the New Testament. Um And so it kind of, it irks me when people like Candace Owens, who are otherwise very intelligent and to the point on a lot of issues, basically completely fumble the ball on this. So Candace Owens had this discussion and this, this segment is going to be called the Disneyland conservatives, because I want to just show you how out of touch with reality uh, Candace is on this issue. Um, So watch this clip. This is her talking about porn addiction on the uh on her podcast and answering some reader questions and uh check this out obviously an ill it's obviously very bad and yet there are people that are completely brainwashed and think that it's a matter of free speech like obviously that's not free speech people just having sex on a camera is not a matter of free speech. Okay. That right there out the gate, people are brainwashed to think that that's free speech. Now, Candace, what we know about free speech is that you have to protect speech that you don't like. Also the great Bill Hicks once asked the question, what is pornography? What is pornography? Let's look, let's let's see what Google defines as por- pornography. Pointed or visual material containing the explicit explicit <clears throat> excuse me description or display of sexual organs or activity intended to stimulate erotic rather than aesthetic or emotional feelings. So keep that last part in mind intended to stimulate erotic rather than aesthetic or emotional feelings. Now what Bill Hicks pointed out uh, back in his day, here, let me blow that up for you. I'm sorry. That's a little small. What Bill Hicks pointed out in his day was that um, doesn't that sound like every commercial on TV, you know, and they, the Bud Light commercials have the chicks in bikinis cracking beer and you know, and then he he goes into this whole joke about how if they could do it, they just have a naked woman with her fingers between her legs and enjoy Coke, you know, because so what do you actually define as pornography? That's that's where it becomes a slippery slope, because once you have that control mechanism in place, and this is the control mechanism that Candace is advocating for, I'm going to go into why she's wrong about this, because she's dead wrong about this. Um, once you have that control mechanism in place, the definition of what's pornography can shift. Suddenly, if you show, you know, pictures of a, a dead baby that's naked on a on a war zone in a war zone, that's pornography, and they can censor that, and they can call that pornography. They can call anything. They're like, well, it's naked, so it stimulates erotic feelings, you know. So it's these when you start conservatives, when you start advocating for this stuff you look ridiculous for, for like censoring porn. And also Candace, you have the right as a parent, as a, you know, head of household, as a, 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 the, the mother of a family to keep pornography out of your household. You know, this is another area where the conservatives just become the same hypocrites that the left is because typically they're advocating for personal responsibility and as a parent, it's your personal responsibility to keep pornography, keep your kids away from pornography, talk to your kids. Now, it could be argued that in today's world, it's nearly impossible to completely shield your children from pornography because it's everywhere. But that doesn't give you the excuse. They, they could have made the same argument back in the day with television. Now, 
should certain should pornography and, and certain things be censored from certain environments? Absolutely. I mean, if there's a kid's channel, they shouldn't be showing adult commercials or, you know, things like it, whether it's on the internet or on TV or whatever, but let's, uh, let's continue listening to Candace here because this gets better. Well, this person writes, I never watched porn because my father told me that's some father's daughter. And if you watch it, you shame her, him and the whole family. Wow. That's powerful from conversations with friends. Now that's a little emotional. Um, would this person apply the same logic to w watching a soldier kill someone on a battlefield? You know, if you do people who commit war crimes, are their families guilty of that too, of that sin? You know, when it's porn, it was like, oh, well, the daughter and her, you're watching porn, you're completely ruining the family and the person who's involved in it. So that again, that's something that could carry over to anything. Now, when it comes to sexual stuff like prostitution and porn, there also is a fine line between consensual and forced. So of course I'm against anyone being forced into doing anything, but when it comes to pornography and prostitution and a lot of stuff, it's consensual. Like these women are adults. They make the choice to do it. And there are male prostitutes too. Obviously it's a lot less common, but let's keep going. I, we're going to go into the history of this in just a minute. I've learned that that advice saved me a whole lot of heartache too. Wow, that is, that is, I'm very glad that you shared that and it's something that people should maybe say to their sons when they're growing up because they are exposed to it and it is very true. It saves you a lot of heartache, especially as a man. As I've said, men are wired differently. Well, this person has a disagreement. Uh, Vic writes, I'm a big fan of Candace, but I don't agree with banning things like pornography and I do indeed see it as a slippery slope. If we ban porn because it's harmful, there are many other things that will eventually be banned for that reason. If we care about freedom, we have to care about the freedom for people to do things we don't agree with to at least some degree. There we go. Now, kudos to Candace for <clears throat> airing that viewpoint. Um, she's going to tell you why she disagrees with it, but... I will give her credit for giving that viewpoint airtime at the very least, you know, um, because I feel like a lot of people don't do that. They don't give air airtime to views that they disagree with or, or even try to debate views that they disagree with. So listen to what she says to this. This is great. Yeah, I think it's the exact opposite. I mean, people act like this. We lived in a society that there was always pornography. There wasn't. And that's why I said we need to do an episode, which I think I will try to do next week, where I take you through the history of pornography in this nation. It, it the only reason pornography didn't exist, you know, f the whole time is because of media, because it's really what media is, what mass media and the ability to display images to people on a massive scale is really what, where, where it came into the West. But it, anyway, let, let me let her finish here. It actually is the opposite. The slippery slope theory has been proven true that because of pornography, we are now suffering from a variety of different ills. It is impacting families. It's impacting relationships. It's impacting men. Men have addictions. Um, it's impacting human sex trafficking. So the slippery slope, you're right. It is a theory that has proven true. But our society was functioning just fine with an understanding that this is not an example of free speech. We are the people that are offering their bodies on the Internet. Um, and readily accessible to young children who stumble upon it. That is not an example of free speech. Unfortunately for Candace, she is dead wrong about this. Um, like, just listen to the mental gymnastics she's doing here. I don't like it, so it's obscene. It's not free speech because I personally don't like it. And again, don't watch it. Don't allow it in your household take some personal responsibility. In fact, what it actually is, is obscenity. And the founding fathers of this nation never had a viewpoint that obscenity was a matter of speech. Actually, yes, they did, Candace, because obscenity is defined by religion, by people who claim to have morals, whatever, you know, people who also support war and death as long as it benefits their, you know, fits their worldview. In fact, what it actually is, is obscenity. And the founding fathers of this nation never had a viewpoint that obscenity was a matter of speech. Actually, they did. It's in the First Amendment where it says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. That's for you, Candace, specifically, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. 
So that's the first fucking amendment of the Constitution. And it does deal with obscenity because obscenity is subjective, Candace. What you view as obscene, I might not view obscene. Maybe I like pornography. I have that right in a free society. You do not have a right to impose your religious views on the masses. And this is the problem that I have with a lot of conservatives is out of one side of their mouth, they're like, oh, free speech, free speech. You know, we got to you know, on the other out of the other side of their mouth. No, we're going to lock down everything that doesn't jive with our Christian values. You know, the same Christians who are arming a fucking mass murder on the other side of the world in several countries, actually. So we're a Christian nation. No, we're not. And I would argue that the proliferation of violence has affected our society a lot more than the proliferation of pornography. And this is why I call people like Candace the Disneyland conservatives, the people who view the world through this fairy tale lens where everything was so great when we had God, but since God's been taken out of society, which it, God has not been taken out of society, that's a, that's that's the same level of drama queening that the Israel people and the you know the the trans people do. White Christians are more powerful than they've ever been. Christianity is not downtrodden. You can be a Christian, but this this like fairy tale view of that like you know oh if we just you know get porn out of society and bring God back into schools everything's gonna be fine. It's Mickey Mouse fairy tale bullshit. So. On the porn thing, um, let's get into this a little bit deeper. So this is an article from, you know, it's a, you can say it's whether it's a respected publication or not. It's one of the, the few things I found that had a quick summary, but it's from Fulcrum, which is a University of Ottawa. It's a Canadian um, news outlet. So here's what they say. The mediums of pornography have changed with the advent of new technologies, but the substance of the genre has remained similar over centuries. The use of erotic material, however, has not always been the same throughout time. So this is why I call these people the Disneyland conservatives, because problems like prostitution and pornography have been a part of humankind long before the United States even existed as a country. Prostitution is the world's oldest profession. Ronald Reagan famously said, you know, politics is the world's second oldest profession, but it bears a close resemblance to the first. He was referring to prostitution. So the idea that you can just regulate prostitution and pornography away is on its face a fairy tale and idiot idiocy. Um, but again, if you're true to your values and you believe in freedom of speech, you believe in freedom of speech for things that you are emotionally against, that you emotionally don't like. So let's read the, the next little piece of this here and, and go into the weeds a little bit. So pornography as a term takes its root in modern Greek. The word pornography, pornographie or whatever, first appeared in the French language during the early 19th century and in English by the mid 19th century. Classical forms of the art depict a variety of erotic images, although they are very different from what it is currently considered porn. These sexual images were not used to excite the genitals as many use them today, but instead were political, a means to shock and criticize religious and political authorities. So again, here's Candace advocating the history of porn was it was originally a criticism of political figures, the elites, the powerful. And here's Candace advocating, you know, oh, we got to we got to stomp this out. It's not actually free speech because I'm emotionally triggered by it and it upsets me. Marcantio, Marc Antonio, Marc Antonio Raimondo, my Raimondi. Marc Antonio Raimondi, an Italian man, was one of the first people imprisoned for displaying images of a sexual nature. So again, it's like with these with these conservatives. Okay, so what? You're going to put people in jail now who who film sexual activity or film you know lewd imagery like that? That's that's what you think freedom entails, really? After he created a series of erotic engravings in 1524. <laughs> so this is one of the first like 
historically documented incidents of pornography in 1524. And Candace Owens is blaming pornography on the downfall of America. Yeah, it's, it's not that our ethics are lost or that everything is about money. It's that people see sex stuff sometimes. <laughs> Pietro Artonio, an Italian author credited as the founder of modern pornography, helped negotiate Raimondi's freedom. The French Revolution played a major role in the development of pornography. The, the French Revolution. There you go. We got to make pornography illegal. Yo. Just imagine, like, do you know the, the Victorian era? Candace is like one of those Victorian elites from the Victorian era, all, all prim and proper. Like, oh, yes, the pornography is so disgusting. We must stomp it out. It's so terrible. Pass me the crumpets. The French Revolution played a major role in the development of pornography. The use of X-rated material as a political tool increased substantially leading up to the revolution. Many satirical works used porn to mock political leaders. We got to ban it. Got to ban it. I'm for freedom and expression and got to ban that. Pornography had only been readily available to elite classes and distributors were not prosecuted by authorities until the material became accessible to everyone. So it used to be just for the people who, you know, the Victorian people who are like, oh, I'm so prim and proper on the surface. And they're like, you know, the, the leadership anyway is making sure everyone obeys their rules, which is common of religious dogma, dogmatists. One set of rules for you because you need to be godly and, and Christ-like and I'm the preacher. So I'm going to go bang choir boys or, you know, dudes wives on the side because God, you know, whatever. Pornography had only been readily available to the elite classes and distributors were not prosecuted. So, so uh, in Europe, as print became more affordable, erotica was marketed toward the masses and legal action was taken to stop its distribution. Despite the authorities' efforts, X-rated industries developed in major urban centers like New York, London, and the UK. So it's like prostitution. Once it is a thing, you're not going to get rid of it. It's like People would make the same uh, like I, about guns, right? It's like you're never going to ban guns. Yes, there should be, you know, better regulation. People should, you know, there should be more accountability, I believe. And maybe that's the case with porn too. But you're never going to ban it. You're never going to be able to completely ban guns, especially now that people can 3D print them. And it's the same thing with porn. You cannot ban something that there is a high demand for, whether you like it or not. What you can do is take personal responsibility and make sure that it stays out of your household as an adult if you disagree with it. And that's fair, but that's not what Candace is advocating for here. So the, the growth of photography in the 1820s. So <clears throat> already we're back to, we're to the 1820s. So that's over two, that's like 220 years ago that the growth of photography in the 1820s changed porn because like like print, photos made it easy to distribute en masse. In addition to photography, halftone printing and film made their debut as a medium of pornography in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Widely considered to be the, per the first pornographic motion picture, à la queue d'or, à la bonne, à Bourges, à Bourges. sorry French people, I I'm terrible, was released in France in 1908. 1908. An X-rated Argentinian film, El Setario, also dates back somewhere between 1907 and 1912. Regardless of which film came first, the relationship between the silver screen and erotica was established, and the rest is history. So in the early 1900s, porn was already a thing. Technological innovation has always been vital to the way people express themselves and communicate. Pornography as a political tool and source of entertainment has been manifested in mediums such as carvings, print, film, and the internet. It reinvents itself with each new technological development. Everyone from the ancient Greeks to present day geeks have enjoyed this arousing form of art. So just trying to inject a little bit of sensibility into my conservative friends who live in a Disneyland fairy tale here. Uh, you're not going to get rid of porn. It's great if you don't like it. I understand. Y yes, it's it. There it can. There are valid arguments to be made that 
it does cause problems, but valid arguments can be made about anything. And at the end of the day, it comes down to personal responsibility. Alcohol is probably way more guilty of the degrade degradation of the American family than pornography. I mean, statistically, I'm sure you could point to that as one of the number one factors in the degradation of the American family. Are we going to ban alcohol, Candace? Are you going to ban people from drinking because it hurts the family because you don't like it? Sorry, be consistent please. I don't care what your, you know, imaginary fairy tale people that you, you know, pray to or whatever think here in reality, we have to deal with things in a pragmatic way. And the idea that you're going to ban sexually explicit content or even prostitution history proves that that's absolutely stupid. It, Prostitution has existed since documented history has been recorded since Bible times. And pornography is, I would argue, a facet of that, especially now, because, you know, for example, in, in California, prostitution is illegal, but it's not illegal as long as you film it. So if you film it as a pornogra pornographic film, then, then you can pay a woman to have sex with you, which is absolutely ludicrous. But... That's the, the, those are the kind of mental gymnastics we do because of stupid religious dogma. If it was legal, women would be a lot more protected. Um, you know, they, they could, I think in, in nowadays, when you look at prostitution in a lot of ways, the internet has made it more of a, like a woman's thing where you, they used to have to work for a pimp and a guy like controlled all their money. Now they can pimp themselves through only fans and all that stuff. And you can argue, we can debate the merits and the, the, the moral, you know, uh, position that you have on that, but you're not going to stop it. And the best thing you can do as a religious person to, you know, spread your values into the world is live and live an example of integrity. And rather than look down on people who do things you disagree with, look at them from, from a position of love and a position of trying to understand why they do the things they do. You know, I, I would be interested to see Candace Owens interview a porn star sometime and talk to her, a woman who does this for a living about why she does it and whether or not she enjoys it. Um, you know, and again, I'm not making the argument that, yeah, your porn is good. You know, it, 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 there's clearly bad stuff about it. The industry is skeezy. You know, it, just the idea of selling your body for money on its, on its face is prostitution with when you really break it down, whether it's on camera or not. Um, but again, I'm not arguing about, you know, you know, abstract moral shit like that. What I'm arguing about is pragmatically when you try to ban something like that, you're only going to create, as you saw in the history, we just read the original reason pornography was, was used was, was to attack political figures and, and, uh, you know, the powerful. And so of course it was banned for that. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying that it's used being used for that today. Cause it's clearly not in most cases, like 99.9% .9 of the cases, pornography is not a political thing now. Um, but it is good to understand the history and, uh, you know, why there's kind of this organized, uh, I guess, um, campaign by people to to take it down because it's like decency and again how do you define decency that's subjective and so the best thing to do is to be a moral example and take personal responsibility